In this video, I explain you more about the new lazy collections which you can find in the new MicroStream version 8 release. As mentioned, it's a new feature, so it is especially useful if you have a very large dataset, so a large collection, and it allows you to use less memory on average. Uh, so it might be that you are using more allocations, but you can run your program with less heap memory than with using a regular list, for instance, a regular array list. And it is an alternative solution for what we call the map-based list split-up. So let's look into the approach that you can take if you have a large dataset in MicroStream. For instance, you have a list where you have uh, Pojo stored, large structure for instance, and you have a large list. So we are talking about million of items. There is no need to use this lazy collections if you only have a few thousand of items in a list, but a few millions then it becomes efficient to use this new lazy collection feature. But first, the classic uh, solution is that yeah, you have that list with uh, all those items and they are all loaded at once into memory by MicroStream, which takes a lot of heap size and that might result in an out of memory issue unless you have, of course, enough memory assigned. The general solution, what people maybe think is that is using a lazy reference. Like on the bottom of the screen, you see lazy list of large structure. Then that list is not loaded. When MicroStream storage manager start, that's one thing. But afterwards, if you access the list, it is still loaded all at once, all the items in memory. So that does not really help with the memory usage of your application. So then we have that map-based index. Uh, you can use as a values uh, type of the map, like a hash map. You can use the lazy list large structure. So instead of accessing them all the time, you only access a lazy list for a certain key. That key can be dependent on your use case, your scenario, of course. It can be that it is uh, based on some discrimination of your customers, like area, or it can be the year for uh, your order, etc. So the point is that your data is grouped, and when you know which group of uh, subgroup of items you need, that you can efficiently only select that item in the map, which means that only at that moment your list of items is loaded and only that one. So that is the fine, uh, the way to have a fine-grained control over what is loaded and how much data is loaded into memory. It requires, of course, a bit more of logic from your side uh, because probably this kind of structure is then hidden within a class where you have a regular get, at, uh, retrieve, delete, and those kind of functionality. And internally, is it is uh, mapped to this um, hash map, for example. But now with the lazy collections, we have a alternative. Eh? With an array list, all those green bars, which represent all the list items, there are not a few millions, but assume that there are a lot of them, they are all loaded into memory in that array list. But with a lazy array list, that is the implementation that MicroStream made, it still follows the same principles as the array list. It also implements the list interface, so you can perform the same operations on that lazy array list. But internally, the items are grouped in what is called segments. Uh, the class is also called a segment. And that, of course, gives us some advantages and some possibilities, and advantages for you as a user also. Because initially, when you have a variable data, for instance, which is a lazy array list, it is loaded by the storage manager. Well, only the segments are loaded, not the items within the segment. So no data or almost no data at all is loaded at startup of your program. 
only when you access a certain index of that list by a number, uh, let's say 14,328, then it looks up which, segments, which segment contains that index, and it loads then those list items contained in that segment and is able to retrieve you the item that you are looking for. But as you can see from the image, we have only loaded one segment, only a small portion of the data is loaded into memory, so that means that we do not have a lot of memory used to find a certain item. But of course, we not only access the items, uh, the items by index, if you do a for loop uh, for item in data, then um, all segments are probably loaded, especially if you traverse all items in the, in the list, then of course all segments are loaded. They are unloaded um, automatically uh, because they are also based on that lazy reference from MicroStream, so whenever there is need for more memory, then the garbage collector can remove them, but you can also manually unload them after you have, for instance, traversed your all the items in a list and you know that you don't need it uh, anymore immediately, then you can um, loop over all these segments. That's a method which is available on that lazy array list. And you can call the unload segment method on those segments. But how is then the performance comparison? Is that lazy collection functionality much better? So I made a comparison for that where I created 1 million of random strings uh, in a, either a error list or in a lazy error list, and each string contained 2,730 characters by random. And that means that we have around 3 gigabyte of data here in that structure. If we have the data stored in a data storage, uh, just on disk, if we start an, a program that uh, access the data, so we start the storage manager, and then we access either an item by index, or we search the entire list uh, by a predicate, and we retrieve all the items that um, are matching that predicate, so basically we are traversing all the items, so we need all the items in that array list or in that lazy array list. As you can see, for um, the error list, uh, loading, uh, starting up the storage manager takes quite some time, 45.9 uh, seconds, uh, because it needs to load all the data from the data storage into memory. But once it is in memory, then it is of course super fast. Getting it by index is less than one millisecond. Um, searching throughout the entire list takes about one second, which is also, of course, really good. On the other hand, if you are using that with a lazy error list, then the storage manager starts up much faster. So your program starts up much faster. So that might be a very important factor if you are running serverless, for instance. And then um, indexing, uh, accessing the list by index, then that takes 16 milliseconds, which is more than the zero or less than one um, in the case of the error list, because in this case it needs to load one segment and it needs to load the items with, uh, which are contained in that segment. Also traversing the entire list takes more time, eh? in this case it was 12 and a half seconds, eh? because it needs to load all of those um, segments one by one when we are accessing them. But you see from a memory point of use, uh, so I could run my error list program only when I assigned it 6 gigabyte. The lazy error list program could run in 3 gigabytes. So you see the amount of memory that is needed is much, much less with that lazy error list. Although, with, for instance, with that search by predicate, we handled more than 3 gigabytes of data. We were able to use uh, less than 3 gigabytes of memory because those segments are loaded and unloaded when needed. You see also the difference then in the garbage collection pauses. Uh, there are slightly more uh, pauses in the lazy error list solution, but in, in total they take less much time. So, they, um, so the garbage collector 
and it has less work mainly because uh, we have a smaller heap size. Besides that lazy array list, we also have a lazy hash map, which works in, uh, in the same principles, and uh, where we group the map.entry items in segments, and accessing a item at uh, the map by key, then um, you can ask how many segments are served before it is found. Well, at maximum, the log two of n, where n is the number of segments, because we are using a B3 searching index, so it is still rather fast, a bit slower again than pure on hash, um, on the hash value, but it is still a performant way, especially if you uh, see that it is much more efficient in memory usage. We have also a lazy hash set, which um, implements then the set interface, which uses the lazy hash map underneath, uh, under the hood, uh, where the item uh, that we store in the set is the key of the hash map, and the value is just an indication if it's there or not, uh, that for easier management to look up if it contains a, uh, if the set contains an entry or not. So, as conclusion, we can say that um, you can use those lazy collections uh, when you need to handle very large collections, and I'm talking then about a million items or more. And it helps you in the segmentation so that you don't need to load all those data at once into memory. And um, probably it is still useful if you have um, very advanced usages uh, with custom logic that you are using that hash map um, splits split up as I mentioned in the beginning. So as conclusion, it is um, memory efficient, the implementation at, and the usage, and it uses a slightly more CPU at runtime, of course, because it needs to search for the data and load the data, and which takes more time with this lazy collection implementation. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy the other features of the version 8 of MicroStream. Bye.